Thank you, Per, for that. Um, like Per was saying, I'm a, my name is Roald Otten, and I'm a physiotherapist here at Aspetar. I mostly do uh, clinical work, you see it on my uh, outfit, but uh, I uh, like to do a little bit of research as well, and uh, together with uh, Rod Whiteley, uh, Hans Stoll, and Per Holmik, uh, we did this uh, little research project uh, in which we looked at the EMG activation levels of uh, the three subdivisions of the gluteus medius muscle uh, while doing uh, strength testing with the handheld dynamometer. Uh, so first question is why would you assess the gluteus medius strength? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's well known that in the many assessment uh, forms and, and techniques, the hip strength plays an important role um, for both the hip and the groin. Uh, the gluteus medius is, is known for its role in, this, uh, in the activation patterns of the hip. And uh, as Christian Torborg showed us before, uh, it's uh, very important in uh, maintaining a healthy abductor and adductor uh, strength, ra strength ratio. So how can we assess the gluteus medius? Well, we have many options. Uh, the manual muscle testing is not sensitive enough. The isokinetic testing is probably too expensive and takes too much time. We could use the RM, um, but we prefer to use the handheld the nanometer. It's small, it's portable, uh, it gives objective measurements, and as Christian showed as well, it, uh, it shows good to excellent reliability. Um, so why do we want to test the different parts of the gluteus medius muscle, so the different subdivisions? Uh, an anatomy textbook show a different um, uh, attachment uh, of the different subdivisions and also a 90 degree angle between the anterior and posterior subdivision. Besides that, there have been some, uh, some studies that looked at uh, these three subdivisions already and they show different activation patterns. Uh, those studies been, uh, have been done in, in uh, a few other positions than we uh, looked at and at uh, uh, weight-bearing exercises. So the aim of our study was to, um, to answer the question, can we test the different subdivisions of the gluteus medius and then as well, how can we test this? We also had a, a secondary aim of the study and that is to find out how much activation is going on in the stabilizing leg. I'll come back to that later on. So what did we do? We had uh, uh, 20 healthy subjects, and we did uh, handheld nanometer strength testing for the dominant leg. In this presentation, I will not show you the results of this strength testing. We purely look at the EMG activation levels. And uh, we used superficial EMG, as shown at the, on the picture uh, below. This, uh, this is based on the work done by uh, O'Sullivan in 2010. So what did we do? Um, we had eight strength testing positions. These positions are based on uh, expert opinion, uh, literature review, and our own clinical experience. Uh, we tested in supine with straight legs, uh, in supine with contralateral leg flexed, in sideline with zero degrees, in sideline with 20 degrees of abduction, in sideline with maximum internal rotation, uh, maximum external rotation, uh, sideline extension and external rotation, and the last one, the sideline clamp position. So this graph is showing the, uh, the results of the anterior subdivision. We see moderate to high activation levels in almost all positions except for the sideline clamp position. Um, for the medial subdivision, we see uh, moderate activation levels in most, except for the side lying zero degrees and the side lying internal uh, rotation position, we see high activation levels. Again, side lying clamp position is showing very low activation levels. The posterior uh, subdivision is showing a, a similar kind of graph as the medial subdivision. Uh, again, in the sideline zero degrees and the sideline internal rotation position, we have higher activation levels compared to the other ones. Again, in the sideline clamp position, low activation levels. So what can we conclude from this? Uh, the anterior subdivision, the glute meat anterior, uh, is impossible to isolate. The medial subdivision shows high activation levels 
in the side lying zero degree in the side lying internal rotation position. The posterior subdivision showed a similar kind of graph, but it didn't include the side lying internal rotation position here as uh, it was not stati stati statistically significant. So conclusion, it's almost impossible to truly isolate the individual subdivisions of the gluteus medius muscle. Uh, therefore, we recommend testing the gluteus medius as a whole. Uh, and uh, these three subdivisions are best activated in the sideline <coughs> zero degrees position. Um, a note to this is that maybe there's other positions in which you can test the strength, but we think we covered uh, pretty much all of them. So our secondary aim of the study was to look at the uh, at what's going on at the, the opposite side. Uh, based on the, the uh, publication by Christian, um, we started using uh, his technique for uh, measuring strength in our clinical practice. And every time we did this, we saw a lot, a lot of uh, activation going on in the contralateral uh, stabilizing leg. So in this case, in the left side, we're testing the right, and the left side, we see a, a lot of visual activation. Similar things happen in, uh, in the supine straight leg position. So here you see a graph that shows us the activation uh, results of the tested leg, which is the dark blue, and the stabilizing leg, which is the light blue. And we see that all uh, positions show a statistically different uh, uh, result. But still, there is moderate activation levels in the contralateral stabilizing leg. Uh, for the medial subdivision, we see in, in, um, in a few uh, positions uh, statistical uh, uh, significant differences. Um, but still, a lot of activation in the stabilizing leg in all positions. Interesting is here to note that there is actually higher activation levels in the sideline clamp position than in the test in the stabilizing leg than in the tested leg. In the posterior subdivision, we basically saw the same as in the in the medial uh, subdivision. Again, uh, high activation levels in the stabilizing leg. So what can we conclude from this? Okay, there are some positions that show stati uh, statistical significant differences but there is high activation levels or moderate activation levels in the stabilizing leg and therefore we really have to be careful uh, with extrapolating the results of the tested leg as the, the stabilizing leg might really uh, influence the results especially if you, have, uh, if you work with, uh, with <coughs> patients. The, the subjects we used in this study were all healthy but if you uh, use this in your clinical work you have to be, be a bit careful. To summarize all of this, uh, to get maximum activation of the gluteus medius muscle, uh, you should choose the side-lying zero degrees position uh, here. Um, this position gives uh, significant uh, differences with the stabilizing leg, although there's still high <coughs> activation levels. Uh, An interesting note is that the side-lying clamp position uh, shows low activation levels, but high force output. We think this has something to do with the short lever arm, uh, but probably also other muscles that contribute in this, uh, in this movement. All right, thank you.